human family to the moon one human family on to mars one human family jupiter one human family i forgot the asteroid belt again one human family saturn rings one human family uranus one human family neptune one human family kuiper belt pluto one human family planet nine one human family or cloud one human family back to earth 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 <laughs> gimbal where you at back to earth one human family back to earth one human family back to earth we're one human family back to earth we're one human family back to earth we're one human family good morning one human family how are you today <laughs> i am fine thank you for asking oh you know what i forgot oh my google great googly moogly one moment look I forgot to button my top button. That's taken care of, but you see something missing right here? Hold that thought. I have it right here. You wanna help me put this on? Look, it's a magnet. It's pretty cool, right? I mean, it's strong. So I just put that right there. I put that right there. And then it's official. I don't even have to introduce myself this time, right? But I will. My name is Mike Mongo, astronaut teacher. And you are an astronaut student, and this is Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures. Greetings and salutations. Welcome, one and all. You know what today is? It's Fantastic Friday. You know what today is? <laughs> Fantastic Friday. I just like saying it, you know? Fantastic Friday. We have a very special episode uh, episode today. I'm mean, as, as uh, excited as I am about Fantastic Friday. And you know why I'm excited? Here's why. Because we're planting space raspberries today, pa pa pow You think I'm not excited about that? You are mistaken if you think that. You think I am excited about that? Oh, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. Get these lights in place. Cool. Cool. Now we're in the game. I hope, I hope your last couple days have been terrific. I hope your most recent couple days have been exciting and wonderful. I hope you're finding adventure in your life. I hope you're finding satisfaction and contentment in your life. Most of all, I really, 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 really hope you're finding joy in your life. Because, you know, joy is so much better, if you ask me, than happiness. Happiness comes and goes. Happiness here today, gone tomorrow. Like I can get happy. Oh, look at this. This. Look, I don't know. You know, most people don't play with these anymore, but I got a really special one. This is a fidget spinner and it's got my name on it. I'll show it to you. Check it out. Like a friend of mine who owns a, um, a spaceship in, um, aerospace engineering company made my own fidget spinner. And it's a great one. I mean, it is super awesome. You know, I had two of them. Somebody out there has a fidget spinner with a name on it that says Mike Mongo. You know this, right? <laughs> Here's the funny thing. When you have a fidget spinner and it says Mike Mongo on it, almost certainly it's going to return to you, which is super awesome. Like, that's a great thing about having... Why, doesn't, why don't all fidget spinners have our name on them, come to think of it? I mean, the good ones. I've had some of the junky ones, but oh... That brings me happiness. It brings me happiness. It doesn't necessarily bring me joy. I, in a way it does, because the people who made it for me put so much heart into it. 
Wusa. Their name is Wusa. And Wusa made that for me and surprised the heck a lecka out of me. Oh my googly moogly. I was so surprised to get a, a really, really, really nice fidget spinner with my name on it. And in addition to bring me happiness, it brought me joy. But the reason that brought me joy is because I care about the people who gave it to me. It's not the thing itself. It's the thought of, the, of them putting it together, making it at their company, and then sending it to me. That's a lot of thinking. That's a lot of thought. That's very thoughtful. It's friendly. It's helpful. It's nice. It's really good. So those are, that caused me joy. That brought me joy. And I love helping them also when I can help them. I haven't heard from them in a while. I'll have to check in with them. And that is the difference between happiness and joy. Relationships, like being invested in the people in our life, like the way that I'm invested in you, it brings me joy to, to make you, to make you, to give you tools, to encourage you, to help you create the future that you see for yourself. It brings me real joy. Happiness, oh, you know what brings me happiness? Chocolate chocolate and then when this is gone this chocolate is gone then what the happiness is gone but the joy is getting to share the difference between happiness and joy with you that brings me joy that doesn't that doesn't go away you'll take away this lesson and it'll get and it'll go with you th for life and you realize the difference between happiness and joy happiness comes and goes joy sticks around and that, that is really, I hope you found joy in your life over the last couple of days. I hope, what brings you joy? Oh, you know another thing that brings me joy versus happiness? We'll have to talk about this someday. Uh, or, we, I've got a subject today we're going to be talking about. But this is, it's related to it. Uh, what brings me joy is the fact that you reach out to me on Instagram and, and Twitter and Snapchat, a little on Snapchat, you know, it's not my big platform. Facebook for sure. Uh, Reddit, that was cool. Um, all these different, that is cool. There's all these different platforms that you reach out to me, sometimes even by email, sometimes by Skype, all these different platforms. And that brings me joy. It brings me joy because you're looking to make the best future for yourself possible. You're investing in yourself and I'm getting to, I'm getting to support that. Not just help, but support. I love supporting you. I love supporting you because I was you once, remember? So when I was you, I was looking for someone to support me in the way that I support you. And there were people that supported me in that way and there, were, and I, there was a lot of times I wanted more. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. If you need more support, you should get more support. If you need some more, more support, ask for more, more support. And so when you send me messages asking for support, it's awesome. And when you do the work, that I give, I'm like, okay, so, because when people ask me for support, it usually means that somebody's going to be doing a little work. Trust me, that's the case. There's no free lunches here, as people say. There's no free lunches, unless it's free lunch. So, that, that uh, brings me joy when, when I'm able to help people. I love helping people. I hope you love helping people. Remember the utility that I have, have us put in our head that keep that utility going? The utility is, how am I helping? How am I helping? Got it? Remember that? That utility. It's a utility because it makes, it's an idea that makes your life better. And so by having an idea operating or functioning in your head, it makes your life better. That's a utility. It's a utility function of thinking. People don't think of ideas or thoughts like that. That you can have a thought that is a utility. That's amazing. Like we can have a thought in our head that makes our life and the world better all the time. That's a fantastic utility. It's pretty handy. And it's very simple. Keep in mind, how am I helping? Wherever you go, whenever you are, wherever you be, how am I helping? It could be in a classroom. You could be brand new in a situation. How am I helping? You could be in a situation where people are in need. Like people need assistance and everybody's standing around and you can lead the way by working to help. I've made a mistake before thinking that I was helping and I wound up not helping. That's okay. That's a genuine mistake. If I do that all the time, that's a problem. Like sometimes teachers, sometimes teachers have students that are just like, how can I help? How can I help? How can I help? When they're not doing the work for themselves. 
So if you're busy helping other people, but you're not taking care of your own stuff, well, eventually you're not going to be able to help people. That's when, that's when, that's when teachers can get upset when the students falling short, help helping others, but not doing their own work. I'm sure that's not you, but we know that we know, we know that situation, right? We know people that do that. And that's that all of these things are tied together with this one idea. And that's, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Funny that we're talking about all of these different things with everybody, everybody that contacts me, you know why they're reaching out to me. You know why you contact me? You ask me one question. How can I be an astronaut? That's it. How can I go to space? You can phrase it any way you want to. How do I get to be a human heir? How do I get to be a space explorer? How do I get to live, work and play in space and be a human heir? People ask me that question every day. I just this morning, uh, a dick, a, a ditka, a ditka reached out to me in India, in Mumbai. And, and, uh, let me make sure that's his name or their name. I don't want to be presumptuous. I don't want to presume that I know if a person is a girl or a boy. I presume a, a ditka is a boy, but that's on them to explain to me. That's not on me to explain to them. So that's why I say they. Still finding Aditya. Aditya. Aditya, I just gave you a shout out. How about that? And Aditya and I talked a lot this morning. And why? Because Aditya is talking about their future. And so when, when I'm talking with a student, well, messaging, I say messaging and talking is the same thing. You know, like if you're sending someone a message and, or if you're talking, it's the same thing. It's basically the same thing. It is. So, oh, by the way, speaking of Aditya, one of the things I said, Aditya, have you gone and pressed the subscribe button? Are you clicking the subscribe button while you're watching this? Because it really makes a difference. And uh, if there's a grown up and they really like my messages and your and your uh, student, the student in your life is being supported by Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures, you can go to MikeMongo.com and click on buy Mike a coffee. It's very cool. And then if you're a student and you need to get a re reach out to me, you can go uh, on Instagram, Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures. All right. Or Mike Mongo Astronaut Teacher. Oops. Oops. And so when, we, when I'm working with students, when, I, when you and I are having a conversation, let's get, let's, let's get down to the, uh, as my friend Louis C. Rocks says, let's get down to the meat of the coconut. Let's get down to the meat of the coconut. It's funny. You will remember that I, I point out all the time, hey, you remember how I point out all the time that you don't actually get hired to be an astronaut? You get hired because of the skills that you bring to being an astronaut? You don't, you, you don't become a human heir just by studying to be a, a person who's a space explorer. You get to be that role. You get to go to space and do the things you want in space by pursuing the things that you love, by being good at certain, by bringing skills, by developing skills. Like Aditya wants to develop computer science and computer technology skills. Awesome. And I think that he, they may be studying medicine. I'm not sure. Or engineering. We haven't figured it out yet. And that's one of the conversations we have in figuring out, figuring that out. I help students with that. Heck, gosh, am I allowed to say heck? Gosh, grownups, a lot of times I've met people who are 55 and haven't figured out, I'm 55, who, and have not figured out what skill they want to develop about themselves. That's amazing to me. And, and a lot of times it's, it's, a, it's amazing because you as a student will travel with us as a grown up our entire life. So like the student I was when I was you is still in me now. Like, I mean, I get to have that interaction. I'm, I'm like connected with the younger version of myself. You as a younger version, you get to be with the grown up version of yourself. You, it's not the same person. It's not. You develop and grow and you carry you with you into the future. It's like a co-pilot. It's amazing like that. And so there's grown-ups who haven't figured out, and they don't have to be 55, but they can be older even, but they're usually younger, maybe in their 30s. And they're like, I don't know what I want to do with my life yet. Well, one of the first thing is, how is to think, how am I helping? And then remember what I said earlier, if you're not helping yourself, you can't help others. If you don't take care of yourself, if you're not stable, if you don't have, if you're not on sure footing, 
boy, here we go. We're going right into it, aren't we? If you're not on sure footing, like if you're not, if you can't stand on your own two feet, then how can you lift somebody else? If you're, if you're like this, you can't lift somebody else. It's gonna be very difficult. And so we get to learn how to stand on our own two feet before we help someone else stand on theirs or whatever the situation is. You know, think about it. Some people don't even have feet. Some people don't have legs. Some people don't have working feet or working legs. So we get to help them stand in a different way than what I'm talking about. And they can help you stand in, the, in a different way than what I'm, what I'm talking about. We all have gifts that we get to share with one another. Now, this sharing and this connection, this connection I have with you, this connection you have with me, this how am I helping, this thinking about other people comes down to this thing right here. Here we go. You ready? We're getting into it. Compassion. Compassion. Compassion has a lot to do with empathy and sympathy and feeling how others might feel and being considerate. Compassion, compassion. Caring is compassion. Are you caring? Oh my goodness. Have you ever had a pet, a dog or a cat or a bird or a snake or a crab or a spider or a lizard that you care about or a plant? I love caring about plant. We're gonna be planting, uh, we're gonna be planting space raspberries today. Pa -pa -pa -ow. Plants, if you care about plants, if, if you have compassion for a plant, think about it. A plant can't take care of itself if it's in a pot. It needs our help. It really needs our help. It really needs our help. If a plant is in a pot, it almost always needs our help. Some plants live just like cactuses. They can live through a lot. But most plants, I think, need like water in the very least or to be put in the sun. Like I did not do correctly with the space blackberries, if you recall. And then we grew space mushrooms, which really was not the intent. And then now we're using that information to properly grow space blackberries, uh, raspberries. And now we're using that information to grow space blackberries. <laughs> and now we're using, and now we're using that information to grow space raspberries. Yeah, we're losing, we're using the information that we use to fail in growing space blackberries to grow space raspberries. So we can use information, we can use our experiences to, to continue to help more and better in the future or to help successfully. So when you take care of a plant, you're using compassion. You're using compassion. Unless you're being told to take care of the plant, like go water the plants. It's your job, it's your chore, it's your, um, not homework, what do they call that? Chores. Sometimes people get, sometimes when, when we're you, we get, we get um, allowances for doing chores, which is cool, if that works out. Or sometimes it's just our responsibility, which is cool, because that does work out. And taking care of plants is a lot of, is a lot of responsibility, and it's also a lot of fun, especially if you, if you take care of the plant regularly, and then you get to see it grow, like with the space blackberries, how they did it, or the space raspberries, which we hope that they will. And the same is definitely true for kittens and puppies and, and bird, baby birds and little creatures and human babies and brothers and sisters and nephews and nieces and cousins and grandparents. When we care how other people feel, how other people feel and how other people are doing, that is showing compassion. When we sympathize or empathize, when we see somebody that needs a hand and we, and we run to help. Remember my son, uh, Ravon, who runs to help. He always runs to help. Gosh, that boy. And, you know, I don't compare anybody else to him. And at the same time, he does set the mark for everybody else. I, I see other students who help as much at, at, as much as Ravon and they impress the heck out of me. Oh, by the oh, am I allowed to say heck? They impress the gosh out of me. 
something like that. They impress me. And, and when you help, and so here's the thing. So here, this is important. Oh, this is, okay, you were definitely talking about astronautics right now. When you help grown-ups notice, I'm giving you critical competitive advantage because you know your friends who don't help, I'm tickled right now. I don't know if, you've no, if you're noticing. You know your friends who don't help, it could be your brother or sister if you have one or many. If you help and someone else doesn't, grown-ups notice. <laughs> I'm so tickled right now. We notice. <laughs> we keep an eye out for these things. How about politeness? Politeness is such a, it's like, grown-ups have a lot of responsibility. You know this, right? Like we get to worry about bills. Like if bills don't get paid, it creates big problems. We've been, most of us have been in a situation where you've been around a grown-up who can't pay bills and it's a struggle. Most of us, parent, most of us don't have families who are rich. Some of us do. That's cool. And you get other problems. Um, sometimes, like, it, oh, gosh. When you're around somebody who can't pay the bills uh, or, has, or is having difficulty, financial difficulties happen all the time. It's pandemic right now. Think about all the financial difficulty happening right now. And so when you as a student do simple things like help around the house, pick up, do dishes, uh, take laundry, put it in the laundry room, do the laundry, Ravon used to take out the goats in Jamaica before he came to the United States. He used to take the goats out at five o'clock in the morning, like most students are sleeping. And he would just go and do that and not complain. And his mom would get up and make him tea. I think that's awesome. Like, that's just lovely. So when you are lending a hand and you can do simple things like, like picking up after yourself, but there's even simpler things you can do. Get ready. And this is all about compassion, having compassion, having thoughts and feelings for other people. You see grownups go through tough times sometimes. It's not on you as a student or as a child. We are children when we are students a lot of times to be worry about grownups. That's not your job. That's not your job. Sometimes it, it lands as our job. I, as a child, I, as a student, had a lot of, a lot of responsibilities when it, I, I, I had to take care of parents. And... Uh, when I grew up, I took care of my mom, as you know, and so I always would tell other grown-ups, it's a lot of work raising a parent. That's a funny line. You can even say it sometimes. You could, if you figure out the right time to say it, it's a lot of work raising a parent. And it is a lot of work raising a parent. In the same way, it's a lot of work raising a kid. So, and so if you practice compassion while you're raising your parent, you can do simple things like saying, yes, thank, yes, please. No, thank you. No, please. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, yes, please. Thank you. No. Oh, sir and ma'am go a long way. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. So simple. Oh, it's so simple. It's so funny because it, like that one, I'm like, oh, oh it, hurt. it goes to my stomach. It's so simple. It's so simple. And yet it's so, it's such a challenge sometimes to remind students to say, do something simple. What is that resistance in us? What is that resistance? Oh, you know, I get carried away sometimes and, they, and I talk too fast. I got to slow it down because this is really important. There's a resistance inside us when we say, yes, sir, when we're a student, when we're you. A lot of times there, there is a resistance. If you have been... Uh, if your upbringing has been different and you have not been ha ever had a problem with saying yes sir or no no sir or yes ma'am or no man no ma'am then awesome and yet there are a lot of students who don't know this m amazing power that you have and that's why I'm slowing down the conversation to let you know it is really a superpower it is a legitimate superpower and I know that grown-ups try and put it across, but we're not really great at getting across how important it is. If we wanted to, like, if we wanted to pay you to say yes sir, no sir, it wouldn't have the yes ma'am, no ma'am. It wouldn't have the same impact. It has to come from the heart, and that, and that comes from empathy and sympathy, and that leads back to compassion. So I'm giving you just a little secret right here. Like it's a little one, but it is crazy powerful. Okay? Say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Say yes, sir, and no, sir. Just try it. It will sound, if you don't do it, it will sound awkward in the beginning. Don't worry. Just keep doing it. Watch what happens. Your whole life will change. Okay?
okay, got it. You got the secret. You don't have to tell everybody. Just use it. Let other people think you're a weirdo. It doesn't matter. People always think we're weirdos anyway, especially when we're on the cusp or the edge or the breakthrough of success. Okay? Don't ever worry about that. This thing that I just shared with you in a whisper is super massively important and it will get you very far in life. Okay? Like I said, look, did you see? I slowed it down. I brought it down. I was talking really fast because I get excited and I love talking with you because you're awesome. <laughs> you ever see when, I, when I'm like, oh, I'm talking with you, I start blinking. I'm like, I just like, <laughs> because I really do. I really like talking with you. Look, serving eyebrows. I like talking with you so much. That my, oh, remember that, that my eyebrows are surfing. Can you do that? Have you practiced? Have you learned how to wiggle your ears yet? You have to look in a mirror to find out where the controls are. And remember, I'm trying to touch my nose. I'm, I, I'm giving me a word. By the end of the summer, like it's it's Ju July right now. By the end of the summer, I'm going to be able to touch my tongue to my nose. Touch my nose with my tongue. Oh man, I'm, I'm not. Even, oops, I'm not even close yet. I'm getting there. I'm trying. All right, so. Not to get off to topic, but to keep your attention, I try to touch my nose with my tongue so you know how important it is to say, yes, sir, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am, no, sir, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, sir. To grandparents, to parents, to aunts, to uncles, to perfect strangers, Oh my gosh, you know why you say those things to perfect strangers? This is so cool. Because you never know when you're talking. You might just be bumping into the administrator of NASA or, the, or Elon Musk and you don't even know it because he's in disguise because he's a billionaire or Jeff Bezos who you probably don't even recognize or Gwen Shotwell who is the CEO of SpaceX and people don't even know what she looks like. You could be talking to uh, K7 who is the uh, uh, who's in charge, the director of, of uh, ISRO in India. You never know who you're saying, please, please, thank you, yes, ma'am, no, sir, no, any of those. You don't know who you're saying it to. Grown-ups are always paying attention. Got it? I will stress this later. This is between you and me, okay? You've done a great job of paying attention. It's super crazy important. I'm giving you a superpower, a legitimate superpower. It, it, here's why it's a superpower. It creates your future. It gives it fuel and energy in a way that you cannot imagine, that I could not imagine when I was you, that you cannot imagine when, when, when you are you. You can't see it right now. You just got to take my word for it. As a grown-up who now can see back, like I can see. So it's like I'm an insider. I'm like, okay, I'm calling from the future. And if you say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, and practice it, just regularly be consistent keep on hitting it don't care what anybody else thinks you'll see, you'll have other students make fun of you for doing it they're not going to the same place you are you are a future space explorer you get to go to space maybe they will too but you're you're for sure doing it okay so practice this amazing power that i'm giving it to giving to you it's like inventing magnets and i'm giving you the very first one think of it like that Think of it like I'm putting electricity in your fingertips. It's that powerful, no joke. And it really has to do with compassion. <coughs> what, what am I doing down here? Oh yeah, I was sharing that, that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, so here we go. One, one second. <coughs> Cough in your sleeve. <coughs> testing, testing, one, two, three, is this thing on? Compassion. The reason why yes sir and no sir and no ma'am and yes sir, it shows respect, it shows politeness, it shows that you're working a little harder than everybody else. It's a simple thing, it's just words. It's just words, you're putting them in your mouth. They come from the heart. That's the tricky part. That's the thing, is really caring. That's the, that is the whole trick, really caring. And it's really simple because you think about what if it was me, how would I feel? Like, I have had students call me bro before, Iana. 
And I always tell people, don't bro me. Don't bro me. Do not bro me. Do not bro me. We, we, like, it, it doesn't make sense. I, 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 you got bros. And, and, and sisses and, and, and uh, dudes and, and dudesses and, and uh, pals and friends and this and that. And all the different words that we call one another when we're, when we're good with one another. Everybody already has bros. You don't, need an, you don't need me to be a bro. You need me to be a sir. You need me to be a professor. You need to be a, be a teacher. You need to be a, be a maestro. Those words, those are the words that you need for me. That's what, because I will, because by giving that to me, I open doors for you. So I will stop a student in their tracks when somebody bros me, for sure. Bro, dude, I'm like, don't do me. And compassion also has to do with respect. It's like, what if you, when you're me, you're gonna want the same thing. You're like, no, no, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be bros with all the students I work with. Oh yeah? Listen, when you are a, a Air Force pilot, excuse me, or, or, a, or, a, or, a, or a spacecraft pilot, and you've earned the right to, for respect, you've done the work, and you have a student that comes up to you and says, Ma'am, may I ask you a question? The answer 100% of the time is yes, absolutely. Thank you for showing me that modicum, which means the tiniest bit of respect. And this is, this again, compassion, look, compassion. I'm going to give you some tips for compassion, okay? I wrote them down. I put some thought into it. You're here, I'm here, and we're doing the work to get you where you want to go. You could be doing anything else in the whole world right now. You could, be, you could be playing Minecraft. You could be playing Fortnite. You could be doing anything. But you're here because you see a vision. You have a vision for yourself. And I know that, and that's why I'm here, to support that vision of being in space. Got it? I got it. And so I'm giving you the, the, the extra tips because you're smart enough to be here. That's powerful. So here they are. Hi. Say hi. Say hello. It's, this is also, this falls into please and thank you. Hi. Don't just walk into a room and say, hi. Walk into a room like this. Hi. Don't walk into a room and say, hi. Walk into a room and say, hi. 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 See this thing? See this thing right here? What is this? What is this? What is this thing called? Okay, so <laughs> again, here I am laughing. This is a good one. You're gonna like this. I practice smiling when I was not when I was you. In between when I was me and, and when I was you, I was at a, I was at I was on a job. I was on a job and I was working to communicate to people the importance of smiling. And so then one day I decided, okay, well I'm gonna smile, smile all day then. And so I just put this on. I put it on like this. Look, I have practiced. And it's not just a fake smile because if it was a fake smile, my eyes would be like this. But it is a real smile, so my eyes are like this. I want you to know, you can only do this for so long. Try to do this for one minute. And have you ever seen in photos where people are trying to smile? People will tell you to smile in a photo. And, and <laughs> just, to smile in a photo successfully, here's a trick. You ready? I'm giving you all the good stuff. Here it is. Find the find something that find a memory that makes you happy inside, make a, makes you feel joy, and then lock in on it. <laughs> Can I tell you what memory I'm thinking of right now? I'm thinking about you and me having this conversation, and it's cracking me up. It's making me feel good because I can see you at home trying to smile <laughs> and see. Look, so the eyes the eyes really play into it. You see how I'm kind of squinting? Like, <laughs> what if you smile like this? It doesn't make any sense. It'd be a terrible photograph. People would be mad at you for making this face. So it's just a little bit like so the joy, joy shows up in our eyes. Smiles when you enter a room are a big deal because everybody might not be having a good day. And so if you bring a little bit of joy into the room, joy, not having is joy. If you bring a little joy in the room, you're gonna light, you're gonna light the spirits. When you see, when you, oh, here's a good one. When you are getting in the car, someone's picking you up, maybe it could be if your parents, it could be it, whoever's picking you up from school, it could be a bus driver. 
If you smile at them, if you smile at them, wow, you will have a fantastic, massive, ginormous impact on their life, no matter how grumpy they look. You smile today, and then you smile tomorrow, and then you smile the next day, and you had a tough time getting up this morning, and you smile anyway. <laughs> it takes concentration, willpower, intention, and then I want you to know that that person is going to remember it. I know this because I am that person. I see the smiles. There's these students that come in and they're always smiling. If a student isn't always, always smiling, I ask, what's going on? What's up? Like, you don't have to be just like gleeful, happy all the time. But I mean, if you're not like, like life is pretty good. It's pretty amazing. And if it's not and you need help, that's okay. Just let, it's, that's why I ask to find out, is there a way that I can help because I have compassion for somebody who's not smiling. I don't need people to be happy all the time. I just need to have them have joy in their heart. I need to know that they're safe and secure. And that's, that's a grown up thing to do. That's how I help people find joy, is to make sure that they're, they're safe and secure, not just happy. Like if I had to buy every student an Xbox to make them happy, I would not be enrolled. However, by helping students get to where you want to be, help you achieve your dreams, that fills me with joy and I'm enrolled. Fills you with joy, fills me with joy. Happiness comes and goes, joy sticks around. So saying hi, saying hi is helpful. Saying hi is good, this is it shows compassion. You're like, you're being thoughtful. Leads us to the next one, encourage. Encourage other people. Are you a person who encourages other people? Are you one of the people that we have in our life that encourages other people? Do you, do you encourage other people? Are you an encourager? That's a good question. Hello, Gimbal. Hi. This is the cord for this, this light that goes around this board. It's kind of funny. I don't know how to, how to uh, put it in a better place, but there it is. I'm giving you the insider, insider view of everything. I also have my helmet, which I love very much. Paul Minta said, Mike, you need an astronaut helmet. And so I get to pick one out. There it is. Human air. All right. So here's the deal. So are you encouraging other people? Are you an encourager? Are you a person who says, um, you can do it. You got this. You know that people do that in your life. And if you don't have people who do that in your life, you know what I say. Find those people or surround yourself with those people. Or, or, uh, and, or that's why I'm here to be that person in your life. And if you don't have one, I get to be that person. And if you have a whole bunch of them, I get to be one more. But I want to be at least one person who encourages you and sees you who, who, for who you are, which is awesome, creative, beautiful, thoughtful, intelligent, smart, pretty, handsome, excellent, cool, my friend. Got it? That's how I see you. That's me encouraging you. And you know how I do it? Not just by saying words, by coming from the heart. You know how I know all that stuff? Because once upon a time, I was you. I was you. And so I know how it feels. And so since I know how it feels, I know how you feel. And that means that I know, I know how awesome you are. For sure. For certain. That's 100%. 100%. Students are awesome. You're a student. You're awesome. It's that simple. Dot com. Humans are awesome. You're a human. You're awesome. It's that simple. Dot com. Yeah. And you may even be more awesome than that. And that makes me excited. I'm like thrilled about that. And you and I are having this conversation. You could be the next Leland Melvin. You could be the next Sally Ride. You could be the next Mae Jemison. You could be the next Buzz Aldrin. You could be the next Neil Armstrong. You could be the next mm, Miss Anita Williams. You could be the next. Mm. What is the first? What's the guy who was Cuban who went to space? He, he's still alive. He lives in. in um, he was in Cuba. I've always wanted to visit him. I just Google Cuban astronaut. <coughs> Excuse me. Arnaldo Tamayo Mendez. This is him. First Cuban person in space. Uh, first Hispanic person in space. 
So there you go. And that year was, pow, pow, pow. let's look it up just to make sure. Wow, selected. So he went to space in, in 1980. Uh, space mission, so, Salyut 6. Look, if I'm having a conversation with you, I'm going to look up this stuff so you know this stuff so that, we, so that we're all on the same page. Wow, 1980. Yep, look. Got it. Cool. All right, yeah. So you could be the next... So we're having this conversation because you could be the next... Arnaldo Tamayo Mendez. Arnaldo Tamayo, Tamayo Mendez. He's an inspiration to me, though I, I, get, I get to work on his name. And I, get, I want to meet him. He's still alive and he lives in um, uh, one of the bays in Cuba. I forgot. Uh, Guantanamo. He lives in Guantanamo. And uh, so I, I would like to go to Cuba and meet him. And as the first person of African descent in, in space, that's super cool. So you could be, you could be the next, the next first. Oh my gosh, is it really that time? How does the time go by so fast? I even slowed it down for you. So encouraging people matters. Listening. Oh, you're doing that right now. See how listening matters? Listening makes a difference. It makes me feel validated. When you listen and I listen, when we're listening together, like that's when, when you listen, you're learning. When I listen to you, when you talk to me, when you message me, I think about what you're saying. Listening. Say hi, encourage others and listen. How about this? When you're listening to somebody and you're thinking about what you're going to say next. That's not listening. That's, that's listening to yourself. But when you stop, when we stop and we think about, when we think about what is this person really saying? What do they mean? Like when a parent or, or somebody who is in charge of us says something, like we got to think about that. And then lastly, practice kindness. Practice kindness. Being kind. Little favors. Doing little things without being asked. Opening doors. Opening doors is such an... It's a, like you don't know. Grown-ups are always paying attention to students opening doors. You're like, oh, that's a kind student. Look at somebody being kind. Helping somebody, if somebody doesn't, if somebody drops something and you, and you rush over to help pick them up, pick it up. If they're in the, in the dining room and, and the, instead of laughing at everybody when they, when they have a problem, so you go and help, wow. And that's not easy to do, by the way, but it shows character. So practice kindness. Imagine how you would feel, and that's compassion. When we think about how would we feel, and when you go high, encourage, listen, and practice kindness, look what it spells, H-E-L-P, help. Hi, encourage, listening, practice kindness. Say hi, do all the, do, say thank you, say please, greetings, encourage, you're awesome, you are awesome. Listen. And practice kindness. Be generous, be thoughtful, be helpful. H-E-L-P. Hi, encourage, listen, practice kindness, and that's, and that's compassion. Now. I, I, I'm wrapping that part up. Uh, we'll, we'll, we can t we'll talk about compassion again. You can, you can start the episode over and, and watch it if you miss something. Okay? And we get, to pl we get to plant some space raspberries right now. It's Fantastic Friday. I've been waiting to do this all week. And the, and the raspberries rooted. So, whoa, check this out. All right. Yeah, they're, they're over here. Look, I root, the, I, root, I root the raspberries in the dark right here. I put them in the dark. And then this, it was June 26th, and today is July 3rd, and we definitely have some rooted, rooted blackberries. Let's check this out. Okay, so you can see, see the root right here? See that root right there? Look, they're rooting. They are growing. There's little tiny roots. See the little tiny roots? So we're gonna put these in soil because now is the time. Now is the time. Look, I'm putting them in light for the first time. You know how excited they must be? Oh my goodness, think about it. Wouldn't you be excited if you're a plant and you're being put in light for the first time? Show, I'm showing compassion to the plants. Let's create our little work, work area right here. You know how we do it. We don't wanna make a mess. So, 
It's easy to make a work area with a brown paper bag. Super easy. And since we're planting, we're going to need some soil. Got some of that. Left over from the space blackberries. They didn't work out. And, let's see, hold on. We need to go into the recycling and find um, something to grow. Oh, wait. Oh, yes. This is a good one. I think I have another one of these. Cool. Yeah, I got an idea. All right. I don't want to make a mess, so we keep... Recycling is always useful, so I don't want to just throw it away. I like... I am actually reusing it. Re reusing is part of recycling, so. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Is that too bright right there? We can go right here. We'll uh, let those stay in the, we'll let those seeds stay in the sun for a minute, because, I mean, that must feel great if you're a plant. And we will create our workspace with our paper bag from Trader Joe's where I get my chocolate. I just go down the side, and then go over here, down the bottom. Two cuts. No, there's more than that. Oh, two cuts will do. I can make it bigger if I need to, but that's, pump, that's, that's pretty big. seeds in the sun. Look, it's so, you know, think how these, these seeds must feel seeing sunlight for the first time. Plants live for sun. Like they, those plants are excited. I mean, those seeds are excited. They're future plants. All right. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, since we're doing a bit of an experiment and these are identical, I'm going to, I'm going to cut off a piece of this so that I know which is which. All right, and here's, now I've got a real experiment going on here. So I'll throw that away. Okay. And let's see. I really am excited about these plants, these uh, seeds in the sun, because this has got to be really feel the best. They, I can only imagine how good they feel right now because plants live for sun sun and water and they got both right now you can even see the moisture in the bag look see the moisture in the bag so like it's getting sun and moisture the best and then i got our bag of soil right here And then a scoop. Oh yeah, more recycling. I've got some. I got that recycle. I got that. I got this. Came with a pair of shoes, and it's gonna be our scoop. Now, like I said, we're gonna do a little science here. So we've got two different ones. This is the one that I've cut the edge off of. And the last time, what we did was we put the nap, We put the seeds into this with the napkin. So this time. We're going to adjust that slightly on one of these. We're going to see if the napkin prohibits them from growing, if it hurts their growth. So we're going to put our first layer of soil on right here, not too deep. And we're going to even it out a little bit. This one will do the same thing. Put some soil in here. Now sometimes soil clumps up. I can see some clumps in here. I want to break up those clumps. Even it out. I got a little less soil in this one. That's okay. I can even put some from here into here. It's all the same soil. Then here's what we're gonna do. 
Okay, so we can get the seeds out. It smells like soil. Okay. Be careful, we don't want to hurt the hurt the roots. So we take our time, there's no rush. Remember how I slowed down earlier? Slow down when things are important. Wow, look at those. You can definitely see the roots now. These are definitely starting to sprout. Like there's one right there. There's one right there. Those are great roots. So, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Gotta be careful to avoid cutting any seedlings because that's what these are now, seedlings. They're rooted seeds, they are seedlings. And you can always have somebody help you with this. So put this one right here, we're gonna put that one in the sun. Don't wanna leave it there because it would dry out and then it would die and that would be bad. So then, okay, so in the one, with the cut edge, we are going to cut out, carefully cut out some seeds. Okay, there's one seed. Let me put it in there. Little strips of seeds, making sure not to cut the new roots. Whoops. I don't know. I think that if we cover it up like that, it will have problems growing. Could be wrong. It's easy to make triangles because you only have to make three cuts. Okay, so on this side, we're gonna plant, ooh, there's the one with the big root right there. Let's get that one in there for sure. I went a little fast around there and I should be a little more careful because I do not wanna cut that root because it will kill it for sure, 100%. Hey. There it is. Wow, they're going into soil. It's like, like having little babies that you're taking care of. Totally is. Little triangles. Careful of that root. Listen, if you lose one, that happens too. Right now they're not they're not plants. They're seedlings. And so Sometimes you lose one, that's okay. Don't sweat it. There's a saying, some, to, to, make, to make an omelet, you gotta break a few eggs. And I don't know exactly what that means, but to make some raspberry, space raspberries, sometimes you might have to break a few. <gasps> See, I gotta be a little more careful. Oh, everything's okay. Haste makes waste. Remember that. If you're going too fast, haste makes waste. And I don't put the seeds on top of each other. I give them plenty of space. Last one on this side. Okay. There we go. All right, so those are those are all like that. Okay, got it? That's how we did that. Now we're gonna take a little more soil. And we're going to pop.
plant them. They're really, this is really being planted. I mean, this is really the deal. I mean, don't want to put them too deep underground because they're brand new and they, they're going to want to reach for the sun. And I don't want to disturb the soil too much because I'm not trying to be too rough on them. So that's, that should do it really. Maybe a little more. Cool. Okay. So that's the one with the cut lip and we know that we cut the napkin that we put them in. Now this one over here, here's what we're going to do. Science experiment. So they've got to be in the sun for a little while. They really must have enjoyed that. And they're still moist. The napkin is moist, but it is drying out. So it would not be good to leave the... So I'm going to put this right here. And I'm going to put this one over here. It would not be good to leave the napkin out in the sun like that because they would dry out and definitely perish. We don't want that. Okay. So in this one, we're going to do that. Cool. And then again, tap, 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 tap. A little more so in here. Okay, last thing, last but not least. Put a little water. Not too much, because this is, this, it will fill up in these plastic containers and hold it and they'll drown. Plants can drown. Sometimes you can grow plants in waters, but seedlings, you gotta give them, give them some time. And there you go, our space blackberries. Today is July 3rd, and our space blackberries are planted. Space raspberries. Boy, poor space raspberries. Kept, keep getting called the wrong name. Okay, and this is our science experiment. The cut one is the cut napkin, and the uncut one is the uncut napkin, and we'll see what happens. Pucka pucka. And that is our fantastic Friday. Wasn't that fantastic? I've been waiting to do that all week with you. Oh, wow. We, we got a ton, a ton covered today. So I hope you had a fantastic day. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I look forward to seeing you this, this next weekend. Take away from this meeting today, this, uh, this time that we shared together, the reminder that the reason I'm here is because I knew how awesome you were when I was me. I know how awesome you are now that I'm me. When I was you, I knew how awesome I was and I needed somebody like me. So you are awesome. You are amazing. Awesome, what does that mean? It means when you look at something and it just fills you with awe, you're like, wow, you're amazing. You are amazing, wow, you are amazing. You're amazing, you're a life. How did that even happen? You're a phenomenon. That makes you extraordinary. There's only one like you in the whole world, in the universe. I want to thank you for being you. You keep up the good work. I'm going to be here. We're going to do this. This is a journey and we're on it together. If you need something, reach out. Whatever you remember, there's somebody out here who loves you and who knows you're beautiful. Thanks for being here. In the words of my people, Bye-bye.